In this lesson, we're going to talk about logic. Hopefully, some of you have some logic already. Um, if you don't, we're going to learn about some vocab dealing with it to help you out with that logic. Now, our first one is just going to be a simple statement. And in a, sa in a statement, it's nothing more than a sentence that could be either true or false. Negation, notice the symbol. This is going to be the little symbol that we use to, what I say, negate something. And what that means is just to, to say the opposite meaning um, in truth value. So if one statement was true, if we negate it, it's going to be false. And then the truth value, that's nothing more than is the statement true or false. So sometimes I'm going to ask you to give me the truth value of a statement. And all I'm really asking you is the statement true or is the statement false. Now a compound statement, I go back to something that you probably know about would be a compound word. Two words that you put together to make one. So a compound statement is going to be two statements that we're going to put together with one, um, using and or the word or. Now if it's a conjunction, that's the one, the compound statement we're going to put together using the word and. This little symbol here kind of looks like an A without the little horizontal part in it. That's the symbol for and. Um, I remember that because this kind of looks like a little a, stands for and. And then the disjunction is our compound statement that we put together with, with the word or. And then we're going to use the v, looks like a v, to represent or. This symbol for and, this one for or. Remember conjunction and disjunction. Now what I'm going to do is I have these three different statements. And I'm going to use these to create new compound statements. My first compound statement is here, P and Q. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take what P is, the blue, I'm going to put it in for P. I'm going to take what Q is in the green and put it in for Q and then put an and in between them. And I'm going to get the compound statement that looks like this. A 90 degree angle is a right angle and a segment has two endpoints. And then under here is going to be the truth value. I want to know, is this true or is it false? Now, in an and statement, both pieces have to be true to make the whole statement true. So I'm going to look at the blue. A 90 degree angle is a right angle. That's a true statement. I'm going to go to the green. A segment has two endpoints. That's also true. So if I have true and true, my whole statement is going to be true. Now, notice in this next one, we still have a compound statement and it's a conjunction again so we're going to use and switch the order around here which isn't a big deal but then notice there's this little squiggle or the delta out here that's going to tell us that we have to negate the green statement Q so we have to say the opposite of it now the simple way to say the opposite of something is just to put the word not in there somewhere so it says a, sta a segment has two endpoints so to say the opposite of it I will say a segment does not have two endpoints. And then continue on with my conjunction. So notice in here, I like to underline my word not just so that I know that I've negated the Q. Now in this one, I'm going to go out with truth value again. Well, the green Q originally was true. Now if I negate it, this is going to be false. The other part, the blue, the, the P, a 90 degree angle is a right angle, that's true. So when I look at this, I have false and true. Overall, that's going to give us a false statement. Now in this one, now I'm going to interpret R, still using and, but now this time we're going to negate P. So just say R, everything in purple, and a 90 degree angle is not a right angle. And there we go. And again, truth value for this, well, I look at the purple, the sum of the measures of complementary angles is 180 degrees. Well, that's false because if they're complementary angles, this number should be 90. So I have false for the purple, false for the blue, whole thing is false. Notice, changing it up, now we're going with or. Q or R. Put the actual words into it and you're going to see that. Now you're going to go back and figure out the truth value. Well. Q, the green, is true. The purple we talked about is false. Now we have a true or false statement. In an or, we only need to have one of those pieces be true for the whole thing to be true. So as a whole, 
this whole statement would be true. Now on this one, this goes back to that very first one. It's the same thing, except instead of writing a conjunction, we're going to write a disjunction. Or, now we have true or true. If both statements are true, the whole thing is still true. Now put all three of them together. So we have P and Q or R. Put all my words in there. Now notice in here I kind of go back to, to the symbolism part of it. Going back to the very first example, we had P and Q. We said this whole part was true. Then we So when I look at this, I have true or, and then the R is false. So true or false, statement as a whole is going to be false. I was a little surprised by this. I forgot in this one. Notice P has changed. It's not the same P statement that we've had uh, prior to this. So this one says a 90 degree angle is an obtuse angle. So everything I was saying before was wrong about this being true and true. Now we have P, 90 degree angle is an obtuse angle. That's false. So we have false and true. That makes the part in parentheses false. So now we have false or false. whole statement is going to be false like it says there. Now this is what's referred to as a truth table. Uh, and I think hopefully after looking at all those examples, you've already seen this in a conjunction. In order to make the whole statement true, everything has to be true. So what this is saying is if the first part of the conjunction is true and the second part of the conjunction is true, then the statement as a whole we say is true. Now I have another example here where if the first part's true and the second part is false, well now I have a true and false, which makes the whole statement false. I could also have false at the beginning, true at the end, the whole thing is going to be false. And then last but not least, we could have false and false, which makes the whole conjunction false. Which tells me, when I look at this truth table, that the only way to get a true conjunction is if everything in it is true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. Now, when you go to the disjunction, I have all the same things here. True and true. True and false. False or true. I should be saying tr or instead of and, and then false or false. Well, if both of them are true, so I have true or true, disjunction is true. True or false, disjunction is true. False or true, disjunction is true. False or false, disjunction is false. Now in a disjunction, this tells me the only way to make it false is if everything is false. Otherwise it's going to be true because it only takes one true part to make the disjunction true. Now here we're going to go and look at something coming from our the book that I used to use. We're going to look at some Venn diagrams. So when we look at this, this is giving us a Venn diagram of some different um, students enrolled in a, a dance school. We have tap, we have jazz, and we have ballet. And it gives all the numbers for all the different places. Now we're going to look at some questions. It says, how many students are enrolled in all three classes? Well, if we want to figure that out, we're going to have to look at every single one of these numbers because these 28 students are enrolled in all, oh, excuse me, in all three classes. These 28 students are just enrolled in TAP. These 43 are just in jazz. And these 29 are in, in uh, ballet. Now when you get into the 17, these students are in TAP and they're in ballet. These nine would be in all three. So when we look at it, it's just that these nine right here, those are the only ones that are in all three of them. These, because all the rest of them are either in just one of them or you get something like this, the 13, those are enrolled in two classes. Now how many students are enrolled in tap or ballet? Well, notice it's an or statement. So these 28 students, I always come back and I go ask the question, are these students in tap? Yes. Well, then we count them. I don't care what else they're involved in. They're involved in tap, so we count them. I go to the 13, are they involved in tap? Yes. Come to the 43, are they in tap? No. Are they in ballet? No, so we wouldn't count the 43. So we go through all of these numbers. We're going to need the 28, the 13, 9, 
17, the 29, and the 25. The only number we won't need is the 43 because these are not in tap and they're not in ballet. So when I look at this, we're going to have all those numbers that I talked about, add them all together, we're going to end up with 121 students. Now in this one we want how many students are in jazz and ballet and not tap. So notice we have a conjunction that's a little bit bigger than what we were looking at because we have three pieces. So they need to be in jazz, they need to be in ballet, but they cannot be in tap. So I'm going to go through this again and I'm going to look for all those students. Well, 43 are in jazz, but that's all they're involved in. They have to be in ballet also. So now I come down here in the 29. Well, now they're just in ballet, so they don't count. These 25, those 25 are in jazz. They're also in ballet, so that's good. But then I get to the not tap part. Well, are they, are they in tap? No, these are not in tap, so I'm going to count these 25. Go to the 9. Looks good for jazz and ballet, but they're also in tap, so I don't count them. So this is going to look at it a little bit different. I'm just going to say it's the answer is 25. Notice the way uh, this does it, and it gets cut off a little bit here. I see. Oops. Let me go back. Maybe. Let me go back here. So on this one, what it's saying is, what this looked at it did, it said, let's take the 25. Let's add on the 9, because these students are in tap and ballet. But then it's going to subtract the 9 because those students are not enrolled in, or those students are enrolled in, in TAP, so it subtracts them out. I said let's not even worry about the 9, just go with the 25 because 25 would be our answer in this case. So that gives you an example of how to use some Venn diagrams, um, and that's going to conclude our lesson on logic.